The police state ends with me. And we've made it one more day. Now, I hear a lot of folks saying, well, if I tell the police I have a first, second, you know, fourth, fifth, sixth amendment right, then the police will have to honor it, honor my rights. These, act these people actually think the police will honor their rights. Folks, I don't mean to be rude, <laughs> but you just aren't getting out enough. You've obviously not had ample experience with the police. You only have the rights they say you have because they can just breach your rights and then claim they didn't. They can then falsify, falsify police reports, plant evidence, and have their fellow officers back their stories. Along with the DA's help and the judges will just rubber stamp it. Or even worse, the police can just breach your rights and admit to it and no one will do a damn thing about it. That's becoming the increasingly more common activity. Because once you know there's no consequences, they just do whatever they want. And they, they verbalize it, put it in writing, and laugh about it. Now, where do people get the idea that if you assert your rights to the police, the police will honor your civil and human rights? Where do they get that? Sure, you know, maybe once out of a hundred times the police will honor your rights, but taking a rare occurrence and trying to pretend that is reality is both foolish and dangerous. And let me just point out a quick thing. Just because, let's say, you're stopped on the highway and the police officer illegally search you and you're not angry about it because you feel like, well, I don't have anything, and they illegally search you and then they find nothing and they let you go, and you say, well, I'm okay with that. That's, that's still a breach of your rights. You shouldn't, they shouldn't be doing it. Just because you're not angry about it doesn't mean they're still not breaching rights. Because there might be a thousand other people that are. You might be the one person they, that was stopped that day in the state of Oklahoma or in the country around, you know, around the country that was okay with your right, rights being breached. You know, I mean, just because you think, well, it's okay this time, doesn't make it okay. You don't speak for the rest of us. You know, police, and especially the Bartlesville police, breach rights on a daily basis, on an hourly basis. With each encounter, they initiate with someone they want to take to jail. Again, of course not the corporations, wealthy or well-connected people. They're in la-la land thinking everything's perfect and they don't understand why anyone would be complaining and they hate whistleblowers because all these complainers just complaining all the time. Well, you don't have to complain if you're a corporation wealthy or well-connected person because nothing ever gets done to you. It's, you're like the police, the DAs and the judges where holding you accountable are rare, extremely rare, so rare that they're, they're a blip on our radar. They're nothing. Now look for the catchphrases in probable cause affidavits worked up by the Bartlesville Police and Washington County of Oklahoma District Attorney's Office and rubber stamped by the judges. And this happens all over the country actually. But they're phrases such as, suspect looked nervous. Oh, someone looked nervous when someone with a gun came up to them with a red face screaming at them, jumping up in, in their face with their finger pointing in their face and threatening them. They looked nervous, you know. Maybe they just the person just stood there. Either way, the police is going to say you're nervous. They're going to say you're nervous because that gets the judge to sign off on everything. Also, they say, suspect seemed paranoid. I th that means I, I think they're on drugs. See, I've got probable cause to do everything I want to them. Breach their civil rights, search them, cavity search them even. Just gross things. Suspect appeared erratic. Oh, I think they were on drugs. He was, he or she was erratic. Suspect appeared suspicious. Again, how does the judge sign off on suspicious? What does that even mean? Suspect appeared suspicious. I mean, that's profiling. And you're saying by based on solely on this person's appearance, they look suspicious. It wasn't a physical activity they were doing. It was their appearance. It wasn't that they were, you know, running from a bu building that shots were just fired from with an AK-47 in his hand. That, you know, that would be a suspicious act. It was the person just standing in front of me, the police say, appears suspicious. 
Only a rubber stamping corrupt judge would sign off on these stupid statements. Suspect looked nervous, seemed paranoid, appeared erratic, appeared suspicious. These types of BS reasons for searching, detaining, arresting people are the signs of a police state, a corrupt district attorney's office, and corrupt judges that just rubber stamp everything. No evidence. I just didn't like the person's mannerisms or appearance. I didn't like that they were a minority. I didn't like the length of their beard or the length of their hair. <laughs> what total police state garbage. Indeed, the Baltimore police lie and make up any reason they want to make contact and arrest, seize money and property, detain, breach civil and human rights, and worse. These lying, organized criminals behaving as a roaming gang of armed robbers know they, can't, they can get away with it because they have full backing of the corrupt Washington County of Oklahoma DA's office that uses seized funds for personal use and the courts. And this is a disgusting. And it's probably happening in your county too, you know. Seriously, folks, do a bit of research and get out there and see what a true experience with the police is like. Observe your fellow neighbor out and about on the street. If you see someone in an encounter with the police from a distance and without letting them know you're doing it for your own protection, observe them, video them. If the police know you're videoing them, you're in danger. Trust me, I know. They'll come to your house, tear your house apart, steal your property, claim, detain you, claim you are a criminal, and destroy your life. Anyway, but if you, if you observe your neighbor and encounters with police, observe them and video them, you'll see how bad this country has gotten and what kind of police state we really live in. You have to have, in order for you to feel like if you just tell the police I have rights, they'll, they'll let you have them. If you really feel that way, then you don't have experience. You have not observed the police, either through your own encounters or your neighbor's encounters. Or you're just head in the sand naive. And say what you want. And if you need to live in a dream world where you think if you just magically say the words like, I'm asserting my civil rights, all will be honored and your rights will exist, then I, I guess you can keep that fantasy up until the police state lands on your head, or your children's head, or a friend of yours's head. Because it's going to happen eventually. It's growing leaps and bounds daily. It's time to change that. Speak up, speak out, say no more. That's what this whole YouTube channel and Facebook page is about. The police state ends with me. And with that said, I'll see you tomorrow.